So let's say we've uh, tweeted a few things. We have no followers, so no one's really paying attention. Um, we're going to talk about some strategies to get some followers. Uh, before that, I want you to make a note of this web address, analytics.twitter.com. When you first create your account, there doesn't seem to be a link to this screen directly on your profile. But after you've set it up the first time, then you'll have a link. You'll have a link eventually when you have up here on your little profile icon, you'll have a brand new link called Analytics. But as a, if you never set them up, you'll first have to go to analytics.twitter.com. We're not going to spend a lot of time here yet, but I recommend you do this as soon as you can. You need to activate them. And the point of that is that this will tell you your uh, impressions and conversions and your CTR, click-through rate, to help you better make decisions about this tweet was good, that tweet <coughs> was a bomb, this concept was good, that one not so good, this time of day was good, this subject was bad, analytics, data. All of these social networks nowadays have such a huge cachet of data on us, for good and for bad. As a person, I don't like that these networks know so much about me, but as a business, I love it. I love it as a business that people share. What do they have for breakfast? Uh, what do they like? This TV show that they saw, this book that they read. I like that because that helps me get my message out to the people that would care most about my product. So once I discover who the people are that really care about baked goods, those are those that I can target because I'm a baked goods company. So at some point you want to activate analytics and we'll look at it again a little later, another day most likely, because we have nothing really to see here yet. No one really knows us and we haven't tried to get followers and all of that, but if you activate it, eventually you get this big impressive screen that tells you all this great data. We'll talk about it later. That's analytics.twitter.com and eventually when you activate it, you'll be able to reach it again quickly on the menu here at some point. But for the moment, let's talk about then um, trying to get more followers. There's several strategies. I'll talk about one of the easiest ways, but honestly it's not the most effective. It has some value, and I'll mention it uh, a little briefly. One of the ways to get followers is for you to follow people, to follow accounts. If you follow accounts, some of them will follow you back. Again, it's not the most effective way, but this is one possible strategy. Let's make some notes here. Strategies to get followers. Follow accounts, and some will follow back. So let's say I'm going to do a goal once a day for one week, Monday through Friday, once a week. I'm going to log in and I'm going to follow five new accounts for five days. So I've accumulated 25 new accounts that I follow. Some of those accounts will follow you back. Usually not all 25. Maybe 5 of them, maybe 7, maybe 12, maybe 20. You don't know. But this is one of the one possible way to get followers. You follow accounts. Obviously, you have to be judicious. You have to be specific. So here's how I would do that. You have search on the top right corner. Search is, is, is here in Twitter and it's in all the networks. And whenever you've got search in a network, it's going to search in the network. It's not going to search out all over the web. That's what Google is for. That's what Bing is for, Yahoo. Those search engines search all over the internet. Search built into a network searches within the network. So if I search just the, the idea of cookies, I'm going to ignore everything that it suggests. So I'm just going to search cookies and press enter. It's going to give me the top content with that keyword. 
I can look at the live, the latest tweets about that concept. I can look at accounts that have that keyword in their biography. I can look at photos with that keyword, videos, or more. I'm searching for a keyword. I'm searching for a concept. The theory here is that the people that are using this keyword might care about um, what my company is about. Usually when I search here, I put it on live because top will show you the celebrities tweeting this topic or the big names that are probably not going to follow you back. I like to put it on live and therefore I'll see people like Joshika and uh, she shared preparing for Captain America Civil War by making cat cookies. Okay, so she's into co baking. She made her own cookies. This is someone that seems to be interested in cookies. My company sells cookies. This might be someone I might want to follow. To follow, you simply put your mouse over their, their icon. You get a little bio info. Okay, looks good. I'll click follow. Yes, I will randomly follow someone that I don't know at all. And I will then check another one over here while watching Return of the Jedi. Leah said, you come to the dark side. We have cookies. Okay, I mentioned cookies. Not exactly perhaps what I'm thinking about. Eat lots of cookies. Okay, let me follow that. So this is one strategy. Follow accounts of the keywords that you've searched for. Honestly, it's not the best way, but it does work to some degree. It's not the best way because someone mentioned that keyword at this moment, but it doesn't necessarily mean they really care about that enough to follow a company about that keyword. And guess what? Whenever you follow an account, you're going to see their tweets on the home screen. That's the point of the follow. You're going to see their stuff on the home screen. And if they have posted one thing about that topic and everything else, are topics that I don't care about, or I'm offended by, or are weird, I've just chosen to follow all those tweets. So you don't just simply want to give away all of those follows. You just don't want to follow, 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 someone please follow me back. You don't want to just go follow crazy. Because you're going to probably get a lot of content that you don't want to see on your home screen. It's going to be very cluttered. So what you should do is you search, you look at what they've tweeted, you look at their biography, you can go to their account if it's public and look at the tweets that they're normally tweeting about and then make a decision, do I really want to follow this person? If I actually click on their profile, I'm going to see all this stuff, and again, hopefully nothing bad comes out here, uh, but I'm seeing what what uh, Mar Marissa is tweeting about, and uh, it seems to be okay stuff. I might, I might actually want to follow. And um, Marissa might follow me back. And there are limits to all of this, of course, because you don't want to follow, let's say, 50 people every day. That's a spam tactic, and Twitter knows it, and Twitter is gonna deactivate your account temporarily, saying, what's going on here? Why is this account suddenly following so many people, like a spammer? Because if, uh, if it uh, walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a spam duck. So don't do these tactics that make you look like a spammer. Follow a lot of accounts suddenly. That's why I said do five a day, maybe ten a day, but don't do a lot. There is somewhere in the help file here somewhere it tells you don't do more than this. I don't remember how many it is but it's usually like a hundred a day or something like that. So don't do a lot of follows per day because Twitter will think you're a spammer. Shut you down temporarily. So follow accounts and some will follow you back. That's one tactic. Maybe you don't want to follow accounts but you want to make accounts aware of your existence because every time you follow they get a notification so Marissa got a notification a moment ago that said Victor's Bakery followed you she would go to her notifications just like I saw something like here Afro followed me and I have various options that I could do here I could say nice and move on with my day or I could say well who is this and I click on their account and I see I like their stuff and I click follow. That's the best case scenario. I
get a follow out of me following. Worst case scenario, someone simply ignores me and goes on with their life. No big deal. But when I follow an account, they get a notification and they may follow me back. That's why I want to have tweets. That's why I want to have a filled in profile. That's why I want to have content to entice people to follow me. Look at all these great things you're going to see. Follow me to keep seeing them. But if I don't want to follow because I'm going to see all their stuff, all their weird stuff on my home page, another way to do it is instead interact. Interact with people to make them aware of you. Interactions are replies, favorites, I think they call them either now favorites or likes, I think they call them likes now, retweets or retweets. I'll explain those. But instead of following accounts, so I'm still going to search. Search is the best thing for all of these networks. I'm going to search these keywords. I'm going to see accounts, but instead of following them, I'm going to do one of these interactions. So for example, I'm going to go back to my, my cookie search. And so Destiny Desiree posted Diego baked cookies. I could follow, or I could do a reply, I could do a retweet, or I could do a like. So the like, I would say, is the lowest level of interaction. It's not that it's bad, it's the lowest level. What's bad is nothing. I click like, Destiny got a notification. Victor's Bakery liked your tweet. Destiny is aware of me. That could lead to my tweets getting liked, replied to, or best followed. Let's see, five new tweets appeared since I was talking. Um, when I'm full, I'm like, okay, gotta eat healthy, but uh, when I'm hungry again, I'm like, ooh, cookie, pizza, I want pink berry now. Okay, so again, I could like, I could do these others. Notice it's going to tell you Two other people have liked this. No one has liked this one. No one has retweeted this. So if I also do the, the like, that uh, that's lay. Ashley lets her know I liked it. Um, I'm writing here. Let me write it in. Let me write this in this order instead. Likes replies or retweets. In that order, because this is the order that I would say of value, you can like people's stuff and it has the lowest value, which again is not bad, it's just the lowest value. The lowest, worst value is nothing. You do nothing. But if you like something so disposable, I can like this, move on, what's next? Like that, what's next? Like, what's next? And people do that as well. In this short attention span culture, people give a like and move on and forget all about you. So that's why it's the lowest level. A higher level is a reply. That takes a little more effort. I see Lay's tweet, and I click the reply, and this is okay. Continue the conversation. More effort. You're going to talk to a stranger. What are you going to say to them? What are you going to do to get the conversation going? What are you going to do to get that that follow? Yes? So those two at signs, um, those are two account names, mm -hmm. usernames, and so it looks to me like she's having a conversation with somebody else, and so you're going to comment in the conversation. Is that kind of how that works? Basically, yes. Whenever we see the at name, that's their username. And so lay is underscore lay ash. So I'm replying, and she's in on the conversation because I replied to her. But she was also had replied to Hoodie, and she was Hoodie Panda. So both of their names are going to be added to the tweet, and whatever I say, both will <coughs> both will get the notification. So I'm, yeah, I'm butting into their conversation. Yes. Well, the contributing. Yes. Um, That's a nicer way to say it. The, the difference between an at and an hashtag when you put them in a message is 
that if it's an at sign, it goes on their timeline? Is that true? We, we will uh, talk about that in more detail, but very briefly, let me say here, hash tags with the hash mark are keywords, you know, topics. They're not really a person. But at usernames are a person, an account. So you are directing your tweet to a person. When you use hashtag, you're not really directing it to anyone in particular. When you use the at username in the tweet, that person will get the notification and they could see it either in their notification screen or on their timeline. They're usually in the notification screen. So let's say strategically I wanted to have all the people that Leah follows see what I'm saying if I put her at Leah username in my message then it goes on her timeline and her people might see it. Right? No, we, we can't actually do that. We can't force our tweet onto her timeline. If she follows, possibly. But that would be chaos. Then I could force my tweet onto so many people. Politicians could force their tweets onto my timeline. A business could force their tweet onto my timeline. So we'll never, we'll never be able to force our tweet onto a timeline, but we can do it in a way, we'll see, where our tweet could reach the, the friends of friends. Sometimes I see tweets that are related to the Twitter typeface. What causes that? Usually what they're doing is they've taken a photo of text. They've written their text somewhere else, like right here. I can write my text here and change the size to some large size and take a picture of it. So I can take a photo of my text and attach that picture to the tweet to make it look bigger. I've had that happen on a client site, and um, I think one, we, you can pin a tweet, like I'm looking at one now, and so you can pin a tweet that always stays at the top of the list, and for my client, that's the one that's got the larger type. That's another way as well. Um, you can showcase a tweet, your tweets, whatever you've tweeted. You can showcase a tweet, you can pin your tweet so that your tweet always is visible it might look a little bit larger, but notice Twitter itself semi-randomly also makes some of your text a little larger. Right. In my own tweet right here, look at the size of that text as opposed to this one, as opposed to this one. I didn't do anything special, but sometimes it seems Twitter, and there's probably some reason, Twitter does make some of your text a little larger sometimes. But to change the font or get creative, that can be done via a picture of text. And your replies are going to go to the notifications unless a person specifically sent you a message. So when is it like a conversation when it's like you can see that two people are talking? On, um, on Leia right here, it says right there, in reply to Hoodie. This is an indicator that Leia is having a conversation, which I can see here, view conversation. So when I click there, then it's going to show the whole conversation. But doing your page, would you have a conversation with Leia that's posted? As soon as I reply, uh, my tweet will show up on my home page and it'll say, in reply to Leia. So it will allow us to see the whole conversation if a person chooses to view the conversation or else they would just see the one tweet. I never saw what Hoodie wrote. I'm just seeing what Leia wrote. If I do want to see what she was saying, I could view conversation. And my own tweets show up like that as well. So this is the next level of interaction where I do a reply. This, of course, is the next level, so it could be more difficult. Because I have to figure out, what am I going to write here? Yes, I am getting in on the conversation with two different people. They could take it badly and say, leave me alone. Why are you bothering us? Worst case scenario. Best case scenario, depending on what I write, they could say, oh, great, you have a great opinion, or I like you, or whatever. You don't know. It depends on what, you're, what the person is saying, what you're trying to say. Let me do one a little easier where it's not a conversation. Um, time to lay down because I'm tired working in the morning. So she didn't say anything about cookies, but she's got cookies in her title right there. So 
I'm going to try it. A random person. I'm going to say something here. And I'm going to say, before you lay down, how about one of our amazing pecan cookies? And I'll put a smiley. And so this is what a social media marketer does. One aspect of it, you're going to exist in a vacuum. If you actively use social media to try to get customers, it could go well, it could go wrong. You don't know. But I've had a lot of great experiences for myself and clients doing this. It does work. Sometimes there's a negative reaction. If there's a negative reaction, move on. There's plenty more fish in the sea. But I'm going to say something here, and it may go over well, it may not. And the thing is, the tightrope that you have to walk is the salesmanship as opposed to the social and social media. There's uh, a formula that you have to decide on. How much are you going to be about selling and about, look at this, and about follow us, the salesmanship of it? And how much are you going to be about building a community? Because the community could lead to the followers and the sales. I'm not right away saying, try one of our cookies, here's a link. Try one of our cookies, here's a coupon. I could do that. It may work, it may not. Yes? Uh, your, I haven't really checked on this years, but it used to be there was some sort of a ratio that people were suggesting, like five informational tweets to one sales tweet or something. Well, yes, but again, with any of these advices uh, and articles about what to do on social media, that applies to some people and not others. Right. So whatever ratio you want to do, five informational and one salesmanship is fine. You can also do like a formula of 80% sales and 20% fun stuff, or vice versa. So that's why you're going to try different things, check your analytics, and see what's working. And then for you, you will decide, it does work for me to be more salesman than more fun or it's not working for me to sell a lot, let me be fun for a few days, and then try to sell. The key is to know your audience. The key is to what? Know your audience. Know your audience, exactly. Research should be more aware. Exactly, so that's why we've got this search box. Right here I just chose a random person. This may or may not work, but as I keep searching to find this audience, I hone in on who would really care. Yeah, I'll go for it. I'll go ahead and tweet to a random person, which may turn out well or not. You can see, here's the coupon, but where's the link? Well, <laughs> at the least, my link is on my address, if I filled in my address. Uh, so this could be a way. I mean, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to cause something. I'm trying to cause her perhaps to come check out my profile. On my profile, there will be the link to use the coupon. Um, so this is the next level up. Reply, get the conversation going. She may reply simply with haha. And then okay, that's it, moving on. Or I could still try to reply and get something out of that conversation or it might not it might not work. The next level up is the retweet. Um, a lot of times you see, or I see at least people's biographies. They have some biography, and it says, retweets do not mean endorsements. I don't believe that at all. Retweets, I believe, because the highest level here are endorsements of, of what the tweet is. A retweet is basically you're sharing someone's tweet. You like it so much, you're sharing their tweet with your followers. So 99% of the time, that's an endorsement. You can, of course, be ironic. You can, of course, use it to put someone down. 99% of the time, I feel a retweet is an endorsement, meaning Dr. Vicky is saying, put down those cookies, grab a raw vegan power bite instead. So yeah, I might like that message. I would click retweet. And what's going to happen here is that her tweet 
basically copying and pasting it and sharing it to my followers. I can do that on Twitter because that's the one of the basic tenets of Twitter and all social media where you can share someone's content very easily. So this level of interaction, again, all of these interactions are just to get someone's attention. They're going to get the notification. Victor's Bakery replied. Victor's Bakery liked. Victor's Bakery retweeted. Victor's Bakery followed you. So then when they become aware, they might then decide to follow me or not. That's the ultimate goal. So with Dr. Vicky here, if I click retweet, I can simply retweet it as is, and whatever they wrote will then show up on my home screen. Right, Everything that's on my profile, my home screen, all my followers, they're going to see everything that I that I share, they're going to see Cookie Monster, they're going to see everything. Whoever follows me, they're going to see what I, what I share. And if I retweet someone's content, it'll say, Victor's Bakery retweeted Dr. Vicky Peterson. It'll let them know that this is someone else's tweet. And it'll also show up on hers too? Not on her timeline. It'll show up in her notifications. It'll say, Victor's Bakery retweeted you. We still haven't quite gotten to that just yet. Uh, but what I'm doing here is I'm sharing hers, and I can send it off as is. Um, and I can add my own commentary here, my own tweet in addition to her tweet. And if I do add to that, I have uh, about 116 characters, so just about a full tweet, to add my own content, saying, like, um, We have our own raw versions of our cookies, which are better than the rest. So we like her tweet so much, we're sharing it. We're also saying our own thing about it. We could then have a link right here. Try it. And a link to our shop. point of this again is more to get her attention, not her followers yet. And the point of this is that I've liked this so much I'm going to spread her word. So I will do that. And all of these interactions, you want those too. I want these too. I want likes. I want replies. I want retweets. I want someone sees my profile, sees those cookies, clicks like. Better yet, I want someone to reply. Maybe they're asking, where can I buy that? And I send them the link. I reply with the link. Maybe someone really liked my, my picture of that cupcake, so they retweet it and share it. I have 10 followers. And one of those followers has 1,000 followers, and they retweeted my picture. I just reached 1,010 people. Not just the 10 that I had, but the 1,000 that they had when they retweeted. So I want all of these interactions. And I give... I get what I give. I give these interactions, I get them back. I give follows, I get follows. I give likes, I get likes. I give retweets, I get retweets. Not on a one-to-one -one basis, unfortunately. But the more you do this, because uh, there's no limit to the number of tweets you can do. I personally have 30,000 tweets. I know people that have 100,000 tweets. So there's no limit to these. The more you do these, the more possibility for something to happen. Yes. Um, so if you're following 500 people or something, or 200 people, mm -hmm. um, then, I mean, are you just communicating with tweets? And, like, is that just all in your... Whatever? Yes. Yes, unfortunately, that's exactly what happens. That's why I'm saying the first one here, follow account, it might not be the best one. You're going to get inundated with, with tweets. Every account that you follow, you're going to see their tweets on the home timeline. And again here, uh, I'm getting stuff actually I don't want to see because I just follow willy-nilly. So that is something to, to be aware of in uh, in the more that you follow. You'll see more stuff. Yes? I know Twitter has lists. So does that mean that 
you can separate out a list of people and then look at their tweets in just that list, or is this all still coming through? Yes, but let's talk about that in more detail a little later. So uh, another tactic here. Um, interact with interactors. This is how you reach the followers of those other accounts. You interact with the interactors. That's my, f my phrase for it. I, I copyrighted it. No, I wish. But what I mean with that is you're going to search again. You're going to search. You're going to see content. But this is, this is the way that I like to do it. Um, you have followed, hopefully, a variety of relatively big accounts. Food and Wine is big. How big? Well, on Twitter they have 4 million followers. So my tactic here is, I'm going to go to a profile of a big account. 4 million followers, Food and Wine. I'm going to click on their icon, I'm going to see their profile, I'm going to see they've got 38,000 tweets, and they've tweeted all of this great stuff, 9 minutes ago, for example. And then I'm going to see 17 likes, 7 retweets. I wish Twitter would tell you how many replies. It doesn't tell you. I hope they fix that. This one's got 16 likes. This one's got 8 likes. Surprising. But these are people that are interacting with big accounts. That's giving me some inkling that these are people interested in a topic. I want to interact with those people. And I can find out who they are by simply clicking on the tweet. You can click on its time or just anywhere in the anywhere ar around the edge of the tweet. So I'm going to click the time. It focuses me on the tweet and it tells me right here, these are all of the people that are interacting with this tweet. These are the people I want to go into or go after. These are the people I want to follow, reply to their tweets, like their tweets, because they've already shown interest in this account, which is an account of a topic I follow. So it's like a layer within a layer. Interact with the interactors. Tammy, Tammy Cunningham. Just by looking at these quick stats, she doesn't tweet much but she's prone to follow accounts. She is following 791, and I can further click there and see all of that. I can see all of this data. But Tammy is prone to follow it. She's following more than she has followers. And if I follow her, she might follow me back. Maybe I don't want to follow. She doesn't tweet often. But maybe I want to like one of her tweets, one of her photos, reply to one of her videos, and then she'll follow me. We've got Monica. Not a lot of tweets, but she's also prone to following more. The ratio is she's following more than she has followers. Probably a good indicator that she will probably follow me. Nathan, same sort of thing. I'm seeing all of these so far. Just by those quick stats, I'm seeing that they, are, they seem to be prone to following accounts. They're following more than have followers. The opposite is they are not following very many, but they have a lot of followers. You will probably not get followed back. Four million followers, and they're following a hundred. They're probably not going to follow you unless you have amazing content. So 102, 29. So all of these that I'm seeing here, I could possibly go in, and they've shown an interest in Girl Scout cookies. I sell cookies. I could go over here to, to Petty, and I could follow or I can go look at her tweets and maybe find a relevant tweet about cookies and baking and such and say something. Oh, that's kind of weird, but sure, I can say something here. And I can reply, that, that cake looks so tasty, but ours is even tastier. And a link to my cake. Can you search by email address in the search box if you know people like that you're personally connected with and want to be like, hey, we're, you know, we're you know, I'm now. I'm not exactly sure. You can give it a try. I usually don't search that way because I usually don't build a business on on uh, on the real acquaintances that I know because that might be a small pool of people. I usually want to do it this way where I'm trying to reach many more people than I might know. But you can give it a try to see if you can find them via email. So 
when when you were looking at those just now and you're looking at how many tweets they <coughs> send out and how many followers or accounts they follow and whatnot. So you said they don't tweet a lot, so I'll just like interact. So if they tweet a lot, that's a good thing. They you might follow them. Well, it's up to you because if they tweet a lot, that means you're going to see their stuff on your home screen. And that's about, you know, that flooding that you're going to see. They call it the fire hose, the Twitter fire hose. You're just going to keep getting stuff and stuff and stuff. The more you follow, the more you, the more stuff you see. So then I might not want to follow a lot. That's why I'm saying these three strategies. Okay, don't, don't follow them. Just interact. Once I interact and send this tweet, that might be enough to get my follow back. Can you upload videos? You can, but you have to do it indirectly. You have to do it either via the app or you share it through, uh, through YouTube. So I'm saying when she's done with that one, she should try one of our decadent cakes in a link. This one's more of the hard sell, smiley face. Um, and I'll send it, but before that, um, I'm adding a, a very simple smiley right here, but we've got the new generation of emoji, right? These really nice, cute emoji that uh, that you can uh, that you can select on your keyboard. You can actually also uh, send emoji not just on your device but through a computer. But the trick is you have to first go to the website getemoji.com. This is a list of all of the emoji, and you can just copy and paste. So if you go to getemoji.com and search for happy faces, you will get all the happy, all the faces here, and the animals and the food and all of that. And let's search for cake. There's birthday cake. So I'm going to copy that. That's just text. I can copy it. I can paste it here. And after I tweet it, it'll be it'll become the emoji. We will see the the new generation of these little icons, not the old archaic versions. This will be the cute new full color ones. So yes, I'll tweet to a random person. It may go well, it may go bad. But this is the part of uh, social media marketing. So you see, I just tweeted to Nanny, and then she saw this and the little cake. That's to try to, to show uh, we're being funny. This is a personal fun account. This is not a corporate robot. Uh, we are real. Depending on the voice of your company, of course. I wouldn't perhaps be so frivolous if I was a financial institute trying to get more customers. It depends on the voice of your business. But in this case, I'm being pretty fun and, and frivolous. And if you've got a, a CPA business, you're probably not going to be doing this, sending cakes to people and smiley faces and such. You're going to be a little more serious. Or you might. It might depend on your business. So this is the, this is the third tactic. Obviously this takes a lot of effort, a lot of time. You have to search, find relevant people, reply. If you're going to reply, you have to reply something relevant and on topic. You have to decide, is it going to be fun and continuing the conversation, or is it going to be a sale? It's a lot more work than simply follow, follow, follow. But I use this tactic a lot. Let's go look at Food Network. In my case here, 3.99 million followers. Let's see if there's anything food-related. Learn 12 foods you don't know you could freeze. 91 likes on that. So I'm saying, okay, who are those people? I'm going to click the time. And if there are replies, you will see replies. I wish that they would tell you uh, a number of replies. See, this one's got replies. Don't miss our new chopped. It doesn't say a number. I wish they would say a number. You don't see that until you actually click the time of the tweet, and there are two replies so far. Beverly Hills Wine and Annette Renee Howard. This is another way to possibly get these followers. Annette took the time to reply. Love this show. These kids are so talented and even inspiring. Okay, she's following a lot of accounts. She seems to be interested in food. My company's about food. I could simply give a like. She gets the notification, Victor's Bakery liked your 
your tweet. And it may end there. I may do a, a retweet. Her tweet was so amazing, I want more people to see it. The point is then she will see it, she might follow me. I could do a reply, I could do a follow. I, I will do the reply. In this case, there's a lot of people in on the conversation. I don't want all of those people on the conversation. I can remove their names. And it's only Annette and myself. Because every name does take up some space on your tweet. So I'll say, I know, right? Uh, we wished we were so talented when we were youngsters. So here I'm not doing anything about the sale. I'm not doing anything about buy anything. I'm striking up this conversation, which may, which may fall flat and end here, which may get a reply that says, yeah which may get a reply like, oh really, tell me more, which may get a like, which may get a follow. And the point of all of the follows on all of the social media is not just a great ego boost, but it is a captive audience. It's a captive audience to, to hopefully sell something to, or have them read my blog, or book a table, or sign up for our newsletter or whatever you're trying to do online. So we're just about out of time. There's still, of course, plenty that we can learn about Twitter. As I said, I could teach five days straight on Twitter. But we're gonna get a we're gonna get an overview of five networks this month so that you can decide. I like this one, I don't like this one, this is effective, I'll try harder on this one. We're gonna wrap up in just a minute to have a little lab time. I try to have about 30 minutes, but obviously we're getting on in the day. Any general questions before we wrap it up? Yes. Can I ask about lists? Sure. So, can you tell us kind of how they work? Lists are a way to organize the, uh, the followers. If I follow a lot of people, I'm going to see a lot of tweets that I might not care about. So instead of following people, I have the ability to add them to a list. So let's say I don't want to follow Robbie. I want to add him to a list. So I can go to his profile, and it's kind of hidden under the gear. <clears throat> under the gear, uh, I can add him to a list. A list is like a folder to organize people in different topics. Then when I've got him in a list, I'm not going to see their tweets. Um, I'm not going to see their tweets on my home screen. So let's say I'm going to add Robbie to the cool people list. He will get the notification that says Victor's Bakery added you to the cool people list. They will know the name of the list you put them into. So don't put people into an annoying people list because they will know about it. <laughs> but I'm going to say, okay, I put him into that list. And then on my uh, profile, or up here, I have lists. Show me all my lists. And now if I want to see all the 40 people that I put into this list, I have to go to the list and I will see all their tweets. I don't have to follow them. Their tweets will not show up on my home timeline. I have to go out of my way to go to the lists so that I can see all of the people I've added there and then I will see all their tweets. So that could be a way also to possibly get followers. They don't, they don't show up as people that you follow. Exactly. They don't, they don't get listed under who I am following, and they will not show up on my home timeline. Although I can look at people's lists. People can look at my lists. If I go look at Food Network, I'll probably find over here uh, somewhere. Oh, right here, lists. There are 13 lists. Star Season 10, The Kitchen, Food Network Star, there are five members there. So I'm looking at who did Food Network add to the list. These are people that I might also want to interact with. How will they, do you recommend we do public or private for our list? Uh, that's a good point. Um, not much. Uh, I would say decide on your own because if you're using the list to compile groups of people to get something out of them, you might want to put it under private so that a lot of people don't see your tactic. 
but if it doesn't matter to you that people see who you have listed, then you keep it, keep it public. I'm sorry, so you can make lists private? Yes. When you are adding someone to the list, it will ask public or private. When you're creating a list, add or remove, create a list, you can select private. Only you can see who's in the list. Question? Okay, so you're accumulating a lot of statistics, or it gives you some, uh, some tools that just view what the statistics are, but they give you a way to somehow download a massive amount of data, or some data, mm -hmm. so I can feed it to this other process. Yes, I believe so. On the analytics screen, I believe you can download it as a very universal CSV file, and therefore, um, and then you can do other things with it. I believe there's a download somewhere. More somewhere. I don't have any data really to work with, so that it might not show it, but I believe you should be able to download it and then work with it. And most of the uh, social media networks do that? Most of them give you analytics, but perhaps not everyone gives you a way to download it. They want to keep you in their system. Now, before we wrap it up, Again, uh, none of this has been planned. I have a notification. It may be something good, it may be something bad. I haven't checked it yet, but you've seen that I've been active. Let's see what notification I got. Laughing myself off. So, okay, she replied. I got a, I got a, I got a smile, I got a laugh out of it. That could be it. I could end it at that point, or I can further keep going and uh, maybe get a reply maybe get a follow, maybe get something out of it. But again, totally random person I've never met, Petty LaBelle before, and I interacted and I got an interaction. That's on the road to getting followers, and followers are a target audience, and the more of an audience you have, the 1% of them will follow through. So that's it for the moment. We will uh, have a little bit of lab time until 9.30, and we'll do it again next week. And next time we're talking about Google+.